Thank you. I've had many constituents in Curtin meet with me or write to me about their personal experiences with violence against women. The thing that strikes me every time is how these women are having to fight against an entire system. From the YouTube personalities modelling misogyny, to violent porn, to the social stigma of being a victim of violence, to the lack of adequate funding for services, to the lack of alternative housing options, to the weaponisation of the justice, child support and family court systems and the poverty that follows. The chips are stacked. I worked in community services and saw the way frontline services can only support a fraction of the women who come to them. In one rural town, one of our services could accommodate five women with their children escaping violence. They had 100 people on their books needing support. So far this year in WA, there have been 3,300 breaches of family violence restraining orders. Anecdotally, so many women ask, what is the point of getting a restraining order? For me, like so many others, this issue is personal. Last year, my sister was attacked with an axe by a man known to her. The restraining order she had against him had no effect at all. He very nearly killed her, and I'm now seeing the ongoing consequences of that violence in my own family. Her situation was not domestic violence, but it was gendered violence. For domestic violence, so often women suffer in silence because they know the system can't adequately protect them and this topic is shrouded in shame. When you look at this complete picture, it's hard to believe the words we hear in this house today, that we all care about this issue and we want change. What's missing is a sense of urgency. Actions will speak louder than the words we hear today. This motion includes a list of actions that the experts are saying are needed. More funding for frontline services and legal aid, a review of sentencing laws, a database for, of offenders and community education and prevention work to bring cultural change. Some of these actions can happen this year. Some will take longer, but they all must start this year. We can't accept that this is good enough. Every Australian needs to ask themselves how they can contribute to changing the narrative and shaping the future. This is everyone's problem. I'm grateful for this motion and I deeply hope that this motion can translate into action from all levels of government, from our sporting clubs, schools, community groups, families and individuals. I commend this motion to the House.